All right, welcome everybody to our Geek Talk. I'm Melissa Landra. I am the campus manager of 4Geeks USA. Uh, we are here tonight with part time six, time 13 from our Boca campus, uh, both full stack software developer programs. I'm going to start tonight with a introductory presentation about 4Geeks, introduce our speakers, introduce the lineup of projects for tonight, and then I'll be passing it over to our speakers. All right, here we go. So for Geeks, we are an online coding bootcamp. We have more than 10 locations across seven different countries. So we don't only, don't only have the USA operations, but we're also in LATAM, Europe, Canada. Uh, we're in a lot of places. We have over 4,500 graduates. 85% of those graduates find a job during the first 90 days after graduation. We have partnerships already established with major industry players, and we have been rated by various platforms as one of the top coding boot camps in the world. Just very recently, early this year, we made the Forbes top five full stack boot camps and the Forbes top five data science boot camps. So that's a new recognition that we just got and we're really proud of because, you know, it's four. Um, some other ones that are a little bit older was Premios Excelencia Educativa, best coding bootcamp. We've won that one like a few years in a row. So not only 2023, but a few years before that too. Switch up top 30 worldwide bootcamps, 4.9 stars across all platforms. And we are licensed by the department, U.S. Department of Education. Our main goal here at 4Geeks is to reduce what we call the unemployment rate. So somebody who's unemployed is somebody who maybe is working as an Uber driver or a bartender or, I don't know, a retail position. And they have the potential to have a job with a better salary, better work-life balance and better benefits, but maybe they don't have that access to traditional education. So they come to our program. We offer many different scholarships, financing options, try to make it happen for them. And then after completing the program, they usually see a salary increase of about 22%. And then from there, the job like grows very fast. So your first job as a developer might, you know, already be good for you because you're getting a 22% salary increase. Maybe you work from home some days or a hybrid model, uh, better benefits. Maybe there's insurance, maternity leave, things like that. And then as you get one, two, three years of experience, that salary keeps increasing and more benefits come. Two main features of our bootcamp that differentiate us from others are our Geek Pal and our Geek Force. Our Geek Pal is the unlimited mentorship that we offer to all of our students. So all of them have unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions that they can schedule in their Breathe Code platform. We have group mentoring sessions three times a week. We have a Slack community of over 4,500 developers where people can ask questions. We say developers helping developers and really just supporting you guys through your journey. So that doesn't end here at graduation. You still have access to these one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions, Slack community. You have unlimited access to us for the rest of your life. And then Geek Force is basically that same thing, but with career support. So instead of one-on-one -on -one coding mentorship sessions, we have one-on-one -on -one career support sessions. They are also unlimited. We help you with your resume, interview prep, um, LinkedIn profiles, mock interviews, both technical interviews and behavioral interviews. And of course, most students always use that to get their first job, but you can even use that down the line. So if two or three years from now, You've been in that first role for a while. You're ready to upgrade to that second role. You can come back to Geek Force and we can help you there. Some companies that have hired our students, uh, you got the big name companies here at the top, National Geographic, Microsoft, Facebook, Uber, eBay. Then as you work down, you see more mid to smaller size companies. Miami here is a huge startup network. Working for a startup is really awesome. It's a more fast paced environment. You have a lot of say in what happens. A lot of times, you know, the CEO personally, you get to put your ideas into growing the company. And then of course, working for a huge company like Microsoft is cool too, because you can be like, yeah, I work for Microsoft. So each has its pros and cons. One's not better than the other, but our grads work at a wide variety of different types of companies. And then some partners that help us make what we do possible. Some of these are education partners like Miami Dade College. Some of these are community partners like Shell Hacks. Um, then you have financing partners like Quotanda. These are just, you know, different organizations that help us do what we do, for lack of a better term. 
Then we have two guest speakers here tonight. We have Hector Gonzalez, who is the Director of Programming at Steigler EdTech. And we have Stuart Silberg, who is the Chief Product Officer at SnapRaise. Tonight's lineup, we have Think Unlimited with Maria, Javante, Taylor, and Dana. Spotless. Oh, I think I mixed those up. The logo is here for this one. These are supposed to be switched. Spotless with Chris, Phil, and Wendy. Rhythm Realm, which this is the logo. Debbie, Brandon, and Leo. Color Me with Sarah. And Nourish Nav with Kezia and Jasmine. Apologies there. So thank you for sticking around for my brief intro presentation. I'm going to pass it over to Hector, who is our first speaker tonight. So you may take it away. Thank you so much. Can you hear? Can you guys hear me? Yep. All right. Well, it's a pleasure to be here um, in front of you guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, like you said, my name is Hector Gonzalez. I'm the current. Uh, I'm a co-founder and CTO of Stiegler EdTech. So, Stiegler EdTech is a small uh, education technology startup in North Carolina. We're lo located in Charlotte, and our mission is to promote STEM to all age groups across the nation um, through non-traditional means. So what we, the way that we kind of do that is we have two major platforms that we do that through. We have a training program where we place people directly into technical roles and do a very similar uh, training program like you guys do, um, which I was the director of. And then we also have a varsity esports league which we use uh esports to encourage kids to be involved with stem in all high schools in north carolina so my experience is uh, i actually came from a boot camp as well i uh, started out and i studied music in school uh, just regular four-year degree figured out that wasn't for me i also uh, went and did a boot camp and uh, made my way as a Front end developer for several years until I made the jump into uh, startups and uh, managing and all that. Um, so, my role at uh, Stiegler was originally just to be the director of the adults program that I mentioned is very similar to our training program. And um, um, primarily, it was teaching, directing the program managing TAs, managing um, all the clients and people that we engage with uh, uh, as our hiring partners. Um, but then as a startup, your you know role uh, changes. So with my experience as a front-end developer, I realized that there's a lot of technical needs that we need to facilitate not only from the classroom, but also from the um, from the youth side. So we've slowly transitioned to be more of a um, tech tools company, which has been really cool. So now I kind of head up a lot of the things there. Um, so with that, um, I'll kind of jump into some things that have helped me and might be useful for you guys in your career. Uh, so, you know, first I'll say congrats. I know how difficult it is to get through a boot camp. Um, like I said, I, met, I went through one myself, and it's not an easy task. Lots of sleepless nights. Um, so, I really commend your your guys' self on that. Uh, I'm sure one big thing and one big part of that is the imposter syndrome. Uh, well, I'm really sorry to say, but uh, that kind of like never goes away. Uh, but not in a bad way. I think it's it becomes more useful for you and it reminds you that, you know, you deserve to be there. So um, it, for me, I've jumped from role to role to role and that imposter syndrome because kind of has always been there, but it's been significantly easier to kind of, you know, grapple with that back in my music days. They used to tell us, uh, has anybody done any public speaking or had to give a toast at a wedding or anything like that? You now you get some butterflies in there. So they used to tell us, it's not that your goal is to get rid of the butterflies and push them down. It's to make them flap in unison so that you can actually, you know, do what you're doing with confidence. So I think that is one of the... Uh, is a huge thing to 
the rest of your careers, you know, you're always going to feel like that next role is not, you know, like you're not good enough and all of that, but you can, and that feeling will be, you know, it'll be easier to manage. Um, but that's just, that's just a part that, you know, you are, you know, growing in your career. Another thing that uh, I didn't realize when I was going through the boot camp, but kind of has always been a learning lesson for me as I've gone through, um, you know, your network is really one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest values that you have in your career as well. You know, the people here sitting around with you, the people that you've gone through this experience um, for geeks, um, all the staff that has helped you, uh, they are the network that is going to help you, you know, really propel your career. It is important, of course, to get really good at whatever technology stack that you are, you know, tasked with at your next job. Um, of course, that's a given. But some of the things that are going to get you to not just the next role, but the role after that and the role after that, it's through the people you know through people advocating for your skills. Um, you know, nowadays it's really difficult to um, be able to show that off. So having other people to advocate for you is really what it's about. Uh, you know, I, I also really like to tend to be more merit-based. And unfortunately, uh, I'm constantly reminded that, you know, your network is really important. Almost every job I've ever gotten, even after completing the boot camp was because someone referred me, someone vouched for me, someone showed, you know, how well I did in a previous role and they were able to uh, help me get that next one. Even now as a, an executive member of my team, I pull on my network of previous people that I was with in my boot camp to help me with more technical roles. Oh, hey, I need a, need a new developer. Oh, I, hey, I have a one-off project that I need help with. I am able to one complete those things um, by tapping into the network, but also able to pay it forward to them as well. So really don't take for granted the connections that you've made along the way. Um, and also the soft skills. So one thing that kind of goes along with that network, um, not only in how I've had to get and find new jobs, but even candidates that we look for currently as we've grown. Our company is only two years old, but we've already grown from six people to 50 plus people. Um, and now a lot of my job is hiring. Um, I manage our tech team and a lot of the things that we look for are not just, hey, can you do this one stack or do you know how to program? It's kind of a given, but the things that we look for are those soft skills. How do you communicate? How do you collaborate? You know, are you able to self-teach? Are you able to not only just learn whatever, but jump in there and understand not only what the business needs, but what the user needs, right? A lot of people can really get bogged down in the technicalities of, uh, you know, their role. And that can be limiting. Um, and it can get you pretty far, but it can, you know, only get you so far. So those are kind of my big lessons learned from my experience that I hope to sh uh, share with you and help you in your career. Um, and I know nowadays it's really tough. Uh, the job market is really rough, um, but the first step truly is the hard one. Um, once you're able to overcome this one obstacle, um, and it sounds like that shouldn't be a problem with such a great support network that you already have here, um, I know you guys will have a really successful uh, career. You know, find your niche, develop your your talents, develop your uh, network, and you will be able to do that. And don't forget about your peers, um, because that is honestly the most important thing you've gained, not just the tech skills. So thanks. Uh, any questions? I'm not sure if we're doing question and answer right after or pass it off to the next one. Yeah, no, we can open the floor to questions for you. You can just ask out loud or post in the chat, whatever you'd like.
Oh, we got one hand raised. Javante, go ahead. Yeah, and just uh, what I've come to understand, which I'm sure a lot of people here as well, have been laser focused on creating a portfolio. What are some things that you think of? Uh, I know everybody's uh, have recommended like something that's personal, things of that nature. Where do you kind of, uh, but I also want to make sure I, I kind of make it personal, also something that recruiters would like. Where do you find like the blend between those things? Uh, this is a really difficult question because I feel like every team or every you know tech leader will have their own opinion my opinion uh, truly is you know do i see that people are actually you know coding right it's not necessarily how nice and flashy um the specific app or the specific projects on the portfolio are but do i see like a good mix of technologies or if they do have a specialty, like let's say you're a CSS wizard, you know, have you really branched out and really, um, you know, found different projects that showcase those uh, really specialty skills, right? Um, so it's not like anything particular, like, oh, it has to have this or this, but it's really like, have you, has this individual put in the effort? Have they continuously tried um, and done more projects. Um, and I know that's really difficult since you're starting out. Um, but I would say, you know, just don't don't stop like not just trying to put like it's not a quantity game either, but keep up the effort, right? Um, you're graduating from this camp, you know, there's there might be a gap right between when you find that next role don't let there be a gap in the portfolio, right? Because people are going to be asking, well, were you only working and trying to sharpen your skills while you were in class? Or have you been trying to consistently do that? Exactly. Consistency. Has this, is this person really hungry to actually, you know, do tech, right? Uh, and they're continuously developing the skills because that is kind of a signal that, oh yeah, no, it's not just, um, while they're there, right? It's, they're actually teaching and pushing themselves. Good question. Thank you, that makes sense. And all right, if there's no other questions, then I'll pass it back. Thank you, Hector. Stuart? All right, thank you, Alyssa. Good evening, everyone, and uh, congratulations again to you all. It's uh, no mean feat, as Hector said. I'm Stuart Silberg. I'm the uh, Chief Product Officer for SnapRaise. We're a, an online fundraising company, mainly for uh, high school sports. Um, we do other things as well. We have a, we've branched out into more of a platform for the athletic directors. Um, We've been through a bit of an M&A phase, so we've been buying companies and merging them into the platform, which is a nightmare, um, but that's uh, that's what we do. So um, get used to get used to dealing with other people's technical debt, because odds are you will. Um, I've been uh, I've got a very long and, and uh, illustrious past. <laughs> um, I've, I've been the CTO for uh, Expedia, Realtor.com, Hotels.com. Uh, mention a few but um you know i've been i've been doing this a long time you know i i when i started this is going to age me now in fact when i was asked to do this this uh, speech i was kind of hesitant at first because i'm like what the hell do you want to hear from me from right 30 35 years ago i was punching holes in cards that's when i started my uh, development career right so um by the way you only drop a box of those once before, before you number them all um, but yeah, I was I was renting mainframes by the 15 minute slot, um, and uh, you know when I went into into my first job, um, it was actually for a bank uh, in England. And uh, <clears throat> in those days, you you couldn't bank at any other branch than the branch you belonged to because there was a card index at the back of the branch where they had your details and your signature, so they knew it was you. That's how that's how old I am, aging myself here. Um, so my first job was actually at National Westminster Bank. I was uh, actually a systems analyst to start um, 
on a DB2 database with COBOL IMS DBDC on mainframes, pre-internet, pre-PCs, they're all dumb terminals. Um, we wrote our functional specs in a script that is way less intuitive than HTML is today. And uh, we had to wait three days for a man with a cart to come around to deliver the prints out from the central um, computer data center uh, 100 miles away. So that's that's where I come from, right? We wrote letters to each other. We never emailed. Um, so look, I know this is a this is a tech graduation, not a history graduation, but um, I'll move on. But um, you know, then came PCs, and then came VB for us, um, then Ruby, Java, JS, then mobile, all the other languages that that involved. You know, not to mention C, C Sharp, C plus, .NET, Cold Fusion, PHP. Uh, databases went from DB2 to SQL to MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, Mongo, Mumps, Redis, Graph, Elastic. Did I miss any? I don't know. Um, I think I'm using all of those right now, apart from DB2. Um, but you know, you know, the good news is you will survive. If I can survive all that change, and I know the change is getting faster and faster, but you guys will absolutely uh, survive that change. And as Hector kind of Hector couldn't have given a, a better complimentary speech, honestly, because um, your success has little to do with the technology used. Um, honestly, technical skills come and go. Given enough time, you're all smart people. You've all graduated. You could learn any of these languages, right? If a new one came up tomorrow, it's going to evolve from something you probably already know anyway, but you're going to learn new skills along the way. It's absolutely correct. Um, if, you know, and I actually, when I interview people, I don't, I don't even talk technical to them. I don't care. I don't, you know, I believe you on your resume. If you say, Javon say you've got three years of Node, um, I believe you. That's where I come from. And, you know, you'd be crazy to be lying, but people do, I guess. But generally speaking, people don't. And I, I absolutely believe. But what I am much more interested in is you as a person. Um, and what makes a good developer in my mind, what I'm looking for is... Um, how do you fit into our culture? And I ask two questions in every interview I, I do. What's your major non-technical strength and what's your major non-technical weakness, right? Um, I don't want to hear you're great at Node, you're not so good at CSS. It doesn't bother me at all. What I'm interested in, what are you, you know, culturally are you going to be a fit with the rest of the team and with the company's culture? Uh, and honestly, culture will eat technical skills for breakfast every day. Uh, and if you're not a fit, it's 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 you're not going to be happy not not the company's problem it's going to be you that's not happy so you know look when you're interviewing make sure you ask questions that will directly or indirectly tell you about the company's culture right ask what the mission vision and values are uh, of the company ask how they've handled failures uh, was everyone fired or did they you know learn from their mistakes and move on you know, without hubris, you've got to have the mindset that you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. And look, I, I realize interviewing is two people in a room lying to each other, but but if you ask the same question in different ways enough times, you'll probably get a good feel of what of what's going on. Um, I've been lucky enough in my career to have, have worked some great jobs. Um, Hotels.com was one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, uh, Expedia.com, which they're related for those of you who know, um, it was probably one of the worst jobs I've ever had. And it's not the work, it's not the pay. Um, no, it, it's purely alignment of values. My values were their values and how, how I fit culturally. So it took me 20 years to learn this, by the way. So uh, you're getting insight today on, on day one of your career that, that I wish I'd have had, you know, 30 years ago, because it honestly, I was, you know, I could not figure out why I wasn't happy in some gigs and why I was happier in others. And it boils down to this. So I'm going to try and tell you how to do this a little bit. You need to know yourself, obviously. What really ticks you off? Think about it. What type of people do you gravitate towards? What would someone who loves you say about you? What would someone who doesn't like you say about you? Think about it for a while. Write them down. Be honest. Um, and not all values have to be virtuous either, right? I mean, you can put a nice spin on them. I'm not impatient. I'm passionate. Um, but you have to be honest with yourself about this and write them down. Just list three to five single words that reflect your values. Then for each one, um, give an explanatory statement about it. So I'll, I'll give you mine, right? 
And this is what I do every time I, I take on a team um, or inherit a team with an M&A or whatever it is. Um, the first thing I do is I give them my great expectation speech. And it, it's not that great, honestly. It's a little bit about me, my history, you know, my background. And then we spend a lot of time on my values because I want to give them a very clear understanding of how I work. Now, it's a little dangerous, right, because you're exposing yourself. So this is the keys to how to wind me up if you want to, right? But um, but because I, I, I've spent so much time on this and over the years of, this has grown and I refine it and I, I really encourage you to do the same thing. So my values, integrity, number one. And what do I mean by that? Apart from don't lie, don't cheat, don't walk off with the laptop, you know. What it really means is do what you say you're going to do. So if you say, hey, Stuart, I'll have the report done for you by Friday. I'm not chasing you up Wednesday, Thursday. Is it coming? Is it coming? I believe you. Um, and unless something weird happens uh, and then you come tell me something's happening because stuff always happens uh, and it's going to be late, I expect the thing on my desk. So, you know, and then just general integrity with people, right? Ask yourself, you know, would you do that if your mother was watching you? And hopefully the answer is always yes, um, at least in the workplace anyway. Um, humility and kindness. Um, I'm quite self-deprecating. It's just a personal thing from Northern England, I guess we all are. Um, you know, but humility is a trait I admire and I seek out. I, I don't like big egos. I think they tend to blind you into taking a certain path forward. It stifles creativity, innovation, community input. Um, and I think that, you know, you've got to have faith that your good work is being noticed and will be rewarded and that others are singing your praises. And you're confident in your abilities. You know, you don't have to shout it from the rooftops. We know you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, and one thing worse than a massive ego is cruelty, right? I, I don't like cruel people. Um, and there's no room for that in any of my work environments. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough now where I can dictate what the environment kind of is. So, you know, I don't I don't put up with it. I, I think Netflix uh, say it the best, right? They don't put up with brilliant jerks. I don't care how good you are. If you're not a nice person, you're not going to last. Um, I want to work with kind people, um, people that will help other people without being asked, people who see someone in trouble and rush to their aid, you know, and treat people with respect and kindness. Because um, we are people, right? We're not resources like we so often hear. You know, pe you know, when I hear, oh yeah, my people are my best resources, it just it just gets my back up. We're not we're not resources. We're humans. Um, and I think in this day and age, we have to make more and more effort to be human. Uh, quality and care is my next one. Um, and you can see over the time, I've had to double them up because I, you know, I try and keep it to five and. Um, you know through 20 years i'm like oh i really like care i want to add that but uh i didn't want 20 of them so i, I double them up so quality and care I, i'm very quality driven i stop releases if i think uh, the quality is not there i hate doing it I, you know that's a failure on my part if i if i've had to stop the release that means nobody under me did that um but you know i resonate with 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 people that go the extra mile because they care for the business they care for each other you know in your job you know you're gonna get you know this amount of work to fit into this amount of time as always um with these things um but you know the people that go the extra mile and work the weekend every now and then to get it done are, are the, you know the people i really resonate with um but yeah you know be committed to the company the department and the job at hand make the right decision for the right reason or make the wrong decision for the right reasons it doesn't matter um you know i care i want to see passion uh, and on, honestly, my major non-technical strength is my passion. It's also my weakness, right? Because it does come out as impatience. Um, but um, I, I, to me, it's really important. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to bang on about it too much. Accountability and transparency. Um, I'll be very clear with people when I think they're accountable for something. Uh, if they have doubts, if who's accountable, they need to ask. Um, it's not to point fingers, it's not to apportion blame, right? It's to remove ambiguity so everyone knows where they are and to clearly define people's roles so they're empowered to act and hold each other accountable as well, right? When you get into these um, scrum teams, you hold each other more and more accountable, so it's important. Um, and then comms, right? We don't, technology, generally speaking, in, the, in companies don't, don't communicate outward enough, right? 
you know, few people um, know what we're up to, few people really understand what we're up to. Um, you know, you've got to be able to communicate in ways um, that executives can understand and people that are non-technical can understand. And executives are the most stupid people you'll meet, by the way, in your careers. So you've really got to speak slowly to us. I think uh, when you become a C-level, you have to have some kind of lobotomy or something because, um, yeah, we're not we're not as clever as we used to be um, somehow. So anyway, look, as I say, these are my these are my great expectation speech uh, values. Um, I, I hope they were useful for you. But honestly, I, I truly, truly believe this. I encourage you to understand your values because, in my opinion, it's not about the money. It's not about the prestige, the brand, or even the work you're doing, but it, value alignment is going to be the key to your long-term happiness in your careers. So with that said, and I think Hector also pointed this, I, I hate calling them soft skills, Hector, because I think soft skills are the hardest things you do, honestly. <laughs> uh, so um, I also want you to start, while you're still in learning mode, right, you've just graduated before you, you know, get overwhelmed with, with your new job and, and everything that entails. Um, think about these things to, to, to uh, educate yourself on. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. I know that sounds stupid, but gleefully accept new challenges. Don't worry if it's new territory, if you've never done it before, you'll figure it out as you go. You're all smart guys, right? You'll figure it out. It's okay. But that's how you will grow. Um, don't wait until you've ticked all the boxes for that next role before you start acting like that next role. It's like you can go for it. It's okay. And you'll you'll pick the rest up as you go. Fake it till you make it to a certain degree. Learn how to have hard conversations. Oh my God, this is this is if you could go do one thing, go learn this, right? I think there's a book called How to Have Difficult Conversations or Crucial Conversations. Um, please, please, please learn how to have hard conversations because most of you will be managing people probably within a year or so. Um, it might be one person, eventually it'll be a team. Um, somebody's not going to cut it, someone's going to have to be laid off. It sucks. You have to do it. It's part of your job. Learn how to do it well. Um, listen, you're never not going to lose sleep over it. Even now I lose sleep over doing these things. You have to do it though. Um, and you have to do it with as much grace and as much dignity as you, it will allow you to. So please, please figure out how to have hard conversations well. Be ready to deal with conflict, adversity and failure. You're going to get it in buckets, trust me, in your careers. It's okay. It's all right. Just have some tools in your toolbox to deal with them. Um, failure is fine. You know, failure is learning. So fail fast, move on. Presentation skills, both written and oral. You have to get your ideas and concerns over concisely and clearly, as Hector was saying. Um, learn how to sell ideas and yourself. And then finally, learn how to communicate sideways and down, right? You talk to your peers differently, you talk to your boss, talk to your uh, boss differently than you talk to people reporting to you. It, they, they're slightly nuanced. Uh, it makes a difference. So with that, I'll stop throwing things for you to do at you. Um, you know, technology is speeding up. It's becoming more and more automated, but don't forget humanity, right? We're all human. That's that's the whole, everything I've talked about is really the human aspect of these things. Um, that's what makes us human. Uh, and not only will make you great at your job, but it, it will also help you enjoy your job. And I wish you all the luck in the world for your future careers, because I'm sure you're going to do great. Back to you, Alyssa. Thank you, Stuart. That was very informative and inspiring. <laughs> Is there any questions from the audience for Stuart? There's some comments here in the chat. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Well, that's nice. I mean, I, I honestly wish someone had told me 20, 30 years ago. You know, you learn these things as you go. And, and like I say, I, I was really hesitant to do this at first. I'm like, well, nobody wants to hear, you know, I, I don't know nothing about coding these days, honestly, in the, in the details. Um, sure, I run, I run dev teams, but I, I, you know, I don't code anymore, uh, apart from at home. Um, and then I thought more and more about it and thought, well, actually, that, that really doesn't matter, does it? So I'm hoping these are actually useful for you and uh, 
you learn something from it and are more prepared when you go into the workplace. So. I think she was also asking your, your opinion too. What's the best piece of advice you have ever gotten? Best piece of advice I've ever had. Gosh, I don't know. Um, I think the fake it till you make it. It's, uh, I think, you know, the, the getting comfortable being uncomfortable was probably one of the biggest things I've, I've learned along the way. Uh, someone gave me some advice. I think it was actually an executive coach. Because because Hector's right, imposter syndrome never goes away. You know, you know, I'm sat in a corner office in the Expedia building, a thousand people reporting to me around the world. And uh, I'm like, what the hell am I doing here, right? I'm just this guy from Leeds that, that knows nothing. So um, it, it never goes away. I think it is good for you, though. I think it keeps you grounded. Um, and don't ever, ever lose that. Um, humility because I think it's, it's super important um but yeah it, I think that's it it's like you'll you know if, if you wait till you're ready to take the next job you'll never be ready honestly because you, you you know there's always something you can do better or you think you're not quite ready for right and you just yeah just go for it one more question here in the chat is there a general day-to-day -day for a developer um yeah, I mean, the, the cycles. Um, it depends how how your 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 bosses and managers work, honestly. But there, there's definitely cycles of of. Um, I kind of work on the on the theory of um, I don't care what you're doing as long as your work gets done. And so there's definitely peaks of we've got to get something out, and we're working hard, and you know you're working late, and you might be working weekends, and then you, get, you can't sustain that. So then it, it eases off post release and things like that. Um, but you'll start most days with a stand up um and then you'll you'll crack on uh, there'll be you know there's more probably two to three week cycles depending on your sprint lengths and you know you'll get into these rhythms of of coding and then grooming and then coding um so i wouldn't say it's a, a day to day thing and then of course you've got all the useless meetings you've got to fit in between right that that people like me call you to and um rant on about things that mean nothing to you but uh uh yeah i mean it, i mean when you you know entry level developer it's develop um i would say make sure i mean there's a great book called slack out make sure you've got some slack in your schedule because you want to learn new stuff you're going to want to be mentored off a senior developer you, you've got to spend time learning how to do certain things and how that you know development environment is set up and how it works and whether you're in a CI CD pipeline or whatever it is, you've got to figure all that stuff out. So uh, keep some slack, always be learning. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll just get into these two, two to three week cycles. Any other questions for either of our speakers? There's one here in the <laughs> chat for both Hector and Stuart. How do you see I was AI? Waiting for that one. <laughs> filling your roles in your teams going forward will you need less coders i i'm not sure actually i don't i don't know hector might have a different thing first of all ai general general ai scares the hell out of me honestly i don't mind i don't mind uh, industry specific ai but generalized ai scares the hell out of me um i don't know if it'll ever ever have the creativity that humans have i you know i was thinking about this the other day you know you could say hey chat gpt write me a, or you know co-pilot write me a, a subroutine that does x and or why i i just don't see there being a time when it puts all of that together uh for you and makes you know i don't think you'd ever go hey uh write me a um i don't know write me an app that you know that I can sell to high schools that does fundraising. It's just, I mean, it's it wouldn't know where to start with things like that, I don't think. Um, I think we have to, you know, I mean, there's so much A-B testing we do in this world that we, we're not sure what's gonna work ourselves. I just, you know, I think they'll help you. I think it's, you know, it's like the invention of the calculator. You know, at school, I couldn't use a calculator, right? Because that was considered cheating. Um, so then calculators came and now they're modern day, right? And then. Uh, the internet came along and then you know you couldn't you couldn't refer to that but now you can uh, so now ai's come on it's just another tool 
Um, I think if you look at marketing, marketing's hit, been hit hard with, with AI and you still need marketers, right? It, all it's doing is, is making them more efficient at their jobs. So instead of writing two pieces of copy, they're writing four pieces of copy a day because AI is writing some of it for them. But I don't think, I don't think the general concepts of marketing are ever going to go away. I, I don't know what you think, Hexel. I'll, I'll hand it over. Yeah, so, I mean, I have good news and bad news. I mean, the good news is I, I don't think, um, you know, there's going to be necessarily less coders or, like, the less need of, like Stuart said, the creativity, right? Like, AI is not going to figure out what the users want, right? It's just going to, like, solve a task. I, I think you should treat AI as, like, just the next biggest tool, right? Like, we have code editors. We have newer languages that come out that solve and do things easier. AI is just a new tool. So the bad news is I think what it will do is just it's going to make the what is currently entry level like that much. The, the bar is that much higher, right? You know, before, uh, you know, people would spend a lot of time on HTML, CSS and all that stuff. And now AI can just like pop that out. So I do a lot of managing, but I still do a lot of coding and I use AI a lot. And before I remember back, even just a few years ago as a front end, I used to have to do a lot of the same repetitive, you know, like functions, you know, how many, how many crud, how many ways can you write crud, right? You know, deleting things and all that stuff. So it's just a, it's almost like autocomplete in a way, right? It's not like, autocomplete has made it so that we don't need to talk to our friends or it doesn't really take away our language skills, right? It just makes it so that it's faster. The bar is a little higher there, right? So it does mean that what is currently entry level is not going to be what is entry level tomorrow or the next year. But again, it's, it's a tool that you can learn to utilize to also kind of keep you in the paces. So it's, it's just another thing to learn. Um, and I don't think it's going to take away our jobs in mass. What you're learning here is how to learn and learn the next thing, not how to do this specific thing. Cause if that's where you're at right now, then it's going to be really hard ahead of you. Awesome. Thank you. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. Sorry. My network. Mm -hmm. it, I froze for mm -hmm. a sec. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you guys both. Uh, we're actually at that time now where we're going to wrap up the speakers and we are going to move into the projects, but I would like to invite you both to drop your LinkedIn or email or whoever you prefer to stay in contact here in the chat so that students can stay in contact with you in case they have more questions or would just like to connect and expand their network. Um, is there any final words or anything you <laughs> we just say our goodbyes <laughs> congratulations and uh look forward to seeing you all in the workplace good good job guys thank you yeah, both congratulations for on all the hard work thank you thank you guys all right so our first group presenting tonight we have think unlimited gym with maria javante taylor and dana you guys can take it away Hello, so my name is Taylor. Let me start by sharing my screen and you guys let me know when you can see it. I need verbal confirmation. We see it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so we are thinking of it, Jim. Let me move you guys over here. And so what we'll be covering today is you'll be getting a highlight of the all-star team that made Think Unlimited Gym possible. And this summary, we're gonna talk about or give you a high-level overview of what our application is and why we decided to do it. Then we'll talk a little bit about the process and planning, preparation and execution. And then we will be giving you a demo of our platform. After we take a look at the demo, we're going to talk about some of the challenges that we faced along the way, and we'll try to keep it brief. <laughs> and 
And then we'll let you in on what we have planned for future releases and additional feature enhancements to make our application better. So throughout the course, we've interacted and worked alongside each other, but being able to work closely as a team together was actually different and a lot of fun. It was stressful, but we overcame a lot of these challenges together. But we also achieved milestones together. We celebrated birthdays. We've had, there's been trips to Texas, New York, DC, all while working on this project. Um, we, one of us even got married and is in the process of buying a house. So I don't want to shy away from giving the kudos where they're needed. This is a very dedicated group of individuals. And to kick things off, I'll let Javante start by introducing himself. Hello. <clears throat> Well, that's probably what, one of the worst ways to start. Uh, <laughs> hello, I'm Javante. I'm from uh, Chicago. Uh, I have a background mostly in the medical field. Then I switched to tech sales. And that actually kind of birthed my uh, curiosity or interest in coding. And I initially started kind of getting interested or trying out different things beginning of 2023 and initially or decided to make the commitment to join 4Geeks and have a look back since then. And I'll pass it over to the, the famous Dana. Yes, well, hi guys, I'm Dana. I'm in Houston, Texas. And my coding journey actually began just a few months ago. I was creating content for like a small local businesses. And one day I was asked to like make some changes to like their existing website. It's like an e-commerce platform, Shopify. And I was clueless and I was like, well, how hard can it be? Very hard, let me tell you. Um, but I started watching YouTube videos and I surprised myself with like how much I enjoyed it. So after that, I just started like seeing several ads for like coding boot camps and how to learn, how to code and stuff like that. So I decided to, you know, do some more research about it. I ended up really, really interested. So I decided to take the opportunity and here I am having fun. <laughs> Well, hi guys, my name is Maria Ortega. I currently live in Orlando, Florida and have a background in marketing. For the past couple of years, I have gained experience in the e-commerce world and that's what brought me here to 4Geeks. Coding and e-commerce match up really well and I believe this is what is going to set me apart from everyone else in my field. And I am Taylor, I am from Mobile, Alabama. I actually am employed in software implementation, but it's more client facing and instead of training people on the software, I wanted to be more on the building of the software side. So I started researching boot camps and that brought me to 4 Geeks. So coincidentally, we all share the common interest of um, fitness and wellness. And so we decided to create a small business site targeted towards gym goers and also um, its administrators. Um, I know it probably sounds familiar, but we um, technology like technology. Things are changing all the time. Trends are changing. There's different audiences. There's something for everyone. So being able to take a simple concept and attempt to reimagine it was a fun challenge. So we don't shy away from the norm and wanting to make things better. There's always room for improvement and it's a part of innovation. So. Some questions that questions that we asked ourselves were what could we do to set this one apart from the rest or what would our target audience be what would those key features need to be like at must have and then how could we build on that so part of that is profile creation you have to be able to create a profile purchasing a membership uh, or a subscription, scheduling a class, and we wanted our users to have access to resources, additional resources regarding nutrition, wellness, fitness, and also the ability to post in a social feed to connect with others in the community. And so in beginning the process, I think the um, well, first thing that we experienced is dealing with four different individuals. Everybody envisions different things. So it was important for us to kind of get wireframes in, in place to make sure that we're on the same page, literally, no pun intended. Um, so this was really good to help us visualize what we're going to do and, and how we're going to uh, create the UI for the, the project. And we use, I believe we use, yeah, we use Balsamic for this. So 
So to continue with the process, as we develop wireframes, like Giovanna said, we identify the user stories and tasks necessary for a project. To streamline collaboration, we use the GitHub project board, which was extremely helpful during standups and for tracking our progress. We did a great job managing pull requests, resolving conflicts, supporting each other through bloggers. We're all very proud of, of what we have accomplished. Okay, well, to bring our web app to life, we used various technologies. Our front end was crafted using HTML, React.js, CSS, Bootstrap. So for our back end, we used Flask, a Python framework, along with SQL Alchemy for database management. And our security was through JWT. Additionally, we integrated third party APIs like Stripe for secure payments and Mailgun for seamlessly password recovery. Sorry, that was hard to say for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so without any further ado from the man himself, who better to introduce health and wellness, our site. So here you land on the home page, and on here we introduce a few different things. Um, users will be able to see a large header here and as you scroll down, you're presented with different options for membership, different peers, so to speak, different access. And towards the bottom, we have a very high-end clientele and they have only positive things to say. Down in the footer, we included our sponsors, contact our main office, socials, and the option to subscribe to a newsletter. Within one of these memberships, you do have the option to purchase it in here as well. No fraud here. Oops. Yeah, don't, don't try to steal that card because it's not going to work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and you get confirmation once you've purchased it. So you have your membership. Say so you want to manage your membership online on the Income Limited Gym website. You could sign up for an online account. I already have one. So I'm going to select already have an account and log in here. Try to memorize it. And now you can see that you're signed in. And we also have our buttons here navigating to the same places that you see up top. So starting with our mission, which lives on the About Us page, you get a summary of our mission and the values of Think a Limited Gym. You're also introduced to trainers. You have the option to read more about them and their socials. We've also included our additional locations on here as well. Next, we have our members tab, and you can see that it's captured my information. It knows who I am since I'm logged in. I also have the option here to upload a picture. In the same place, I'm able to see any classes that I've booked. I haven't scheduled any right now, but I'll go ahead and schedule one, and that's our next tab. You can see the current classes for the week, and you select one, and it will save it to your profile. Next, we have our resources, fitness, tips and tricks, health, nutrition, and you have the option to whoop, double click there, go into an external site and learn more about it. I did read a few of these myself. I'm going to log back in because I got logged out. And then lastly, we have our connect page. This is where you can connect with others and create your own posts sharing about your journey. You could start here and maybe you got a little shy and you could say, never mind. <laughs> so that is our site. Simple and to the point. Lots of hard work and tears. 
So goes without saying there were some challenges. <laughs> I'll let Maria so, talk about male guard. <laughs> so one of the challenges faced was related to the integration of the male gun service for the forgot password email functionality. The challenge came from incorrectly handling the, the male gun API key within the code rather than storing the key in the env file. The key was erroneously hard coded directly into the code, which led us to some hard times throughout the process. <laughs> Additionally, we struggled with um, version control. There was one instance in particular where we were, um, maybe one of us worked with an H1 element. And if we merged or when we merged and there were several H1 elements, they all were styled the same. So we learned a lot about CSS specificity and also version controls and migrations. Um, in addition to that, I relied heavily on Git in the terminal to resolve those issues. And while well, integrating this trap API posed its own set of challenges, way too many, um, but one of the main obstacles was navigating through their extensive documentation. They have a different document for the language that you're trying to code. So in this case, we had to use one for like React and then one for Python. And uh, but it was hard to find them. It's not like they were out there. So basically it did require like a lot of reading, a lot of time and uh, a very specific and meticulous approach, leaving little room for error. And for a second, I thought we weren't gonna be able to <laughs> implement it, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and as our speakers mentioned, imposter syndrome played a huge role, as big a role as any of us in this project. But um, in a lot, in all cases, I believe we've overcome it, but it has a way of sneaking back up, I think. Part of this journey will just be faking it till you make it and overcoming it, continue to overcome it and not giving up. That's what's keeping me going anyway. <laughs> so just a few of the features that we have planned. Uh, we want to add the ability to comment on each other's posts um, and I'll, to interact even more, make it more like a social media feed. In addition to that, for our newsletter, we want to be able to give the administrators the option to have a dashboard to manage what type of content goes out somewhere easy for them to go to and say, mass email everybody that we have an event coming up, something like that. So we set out to achieve a lot with a limited amount of time, but with hard work and dedication, we accomplished a lot and I'm very proud of all of us. And that concludes our presentation. If there are any questions, please let me know. No questions. Great. Moving on. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> I think you guys did a really, really nice job, uh, especially combining your website with the presentation, the color scheme that you chose with the black background, the yellow text, the white text, black and white photos. It looks very clean. It looks like there was never a point where you look and you're like, well, why is that like that? Like, no, everything was, you know, spaced evenly, very beautiful. Very nice job. A lot of features. Thank you. Only positives. Thank you. Great job. With Thank that, you. let me shout out to Taylor because she put in a lot of work in the back end. Oh, well, I can't even say back end now because now it sounds like I'm talking about Python and doing the project <laughs> in the background and, you know, creating everything, making it look as aesthetically pleasing as it does. So she was definitely the MVP. She was definitely the MVP. For sure. I'm nothing without you guys. Yes, she was. <laughs> I'm like, they, they must have they, 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 they snuck a mentor in our group. They snuck a low-key mentor in our group. <laughs> That's sweet, you guys. Thank you. Proud of you all. And who's the meme mastermind behind the presentation? Is that Dana? <laughs> the meme mastermind? How do you know it was me? <laughs> I saw you right. How did you know? The Lulu is the Salulu, so I said oh, okay. <laughs> she, yeah. she knows what's up. <laughs> I know what's up. Yeah, that's how I spend my days. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I feel like Taylor. Too, Taylor, girl. she did the rock. She got the rock. Um, I only got um, John Travolta. That's about it. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience for this group? All right, then we can move into the next presentation, which is Spotless with Chris, Felipe, and Wendy.
We have only good opening statements today. <laughs> Hey, Chris. Is your whole group here? Yeah, we're just waiting on Chris. Uh, I think he might have stepped to go into the bathroom. He was, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, my I was on mute. Can okay. everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah, oh, we okay. hear you. Oh, gosh, I was yeah. just I was just talking into the into the wind for two minutes. <laughs> So uh, welcome to Spotless. This is uh, your on-demand cleaning app. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is introduce the team. Hello, everyone. My name is Wendy. I used to work in tech support. I have a degree in computer science. First, I know I wanted to pursue a career as a data engineer until I met a former classmate who took that boot camp, and he convinced me to switch to software development. Well, when I decided to give it a chance, and so far I, I like it, I'm enjoying it. Uh, my name is Chris, and uh, I used to be in the medical field. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, I decided it was time for me to make a career change, and uh, we moved from New Jersey down to Florida. Um, I've been looking around for exactly what I wanted to do. I've always liked coding, and I found the Four Geeks boot camp, and it happened to be in Boca, which was right near me. So I took the dive into that and I've met a lot of great people and um, learned a lot. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this journey takes me. Um, my name is Phil. Uh, I was uh, previously, I was just doing school. I was uh, majoring in psychology and I was also asked on my real estate license and I was just doing real estate work in the meantime, uh, kind of slowed down the market. So I had a couple of friends in the tech industry and they were just really uh, telling me to actually try this out. And uh, I saw Boca Code and then four weeks, you know, they had their uh, program, so I decided to join it. And I'm um, really glad I did. Okay, so let's dive into the app. What exactly is Spotless? Spotless. Can you make it a slideshow? There we go. Spotless is an app that we created to pair cleaners with short-term rental hosts. The US house cleaning market is expected to reach 40.3 billion by 2025 with an annualized growth rate of 20%. While the short-term rental market is projected to grow from today's 112 billion to 315 billion in 2033. Turning over and cleaning your properties is a major part of the short-term rental business. But finding cleaners for your short-term rental is very hard because short-term rentals turn over randomly and most cleaning services have fixed schedules. Management companies take a large share of the host's profits due to this inefficiency. But Spotless fixes this because hosts can list their last minute cleaning jobs as they appear in their booking schedule and cleaners can pick up work with their schedule's allowance when their schedule allows. And this is all while building their reputation on the app. For the process of building Spotless, we built out our back end using SQL Alchemy and created tables for hosts, workers, properties, listings, schedules, and payments. We then fetched data from the Airbnb API and stored it in our database. But before we stored it, we randomized this data and assigned it to our hosts. Our front end was built using React, CSS, and Bootstrap. And now we will go into the demo of the app. I'm going to be walking through the experience as a host, while Phil will walk through the experience as a new worker signing up for the site and accepting his first listings. There's going to be a lot of back and forth because each um, side of the workflow is predicated on the other side's actions.
Okay, so when we first get to the sign-in page, I'm going to sign in as the host. Ah, wrong password. And when you sign in as a host, you go to your landing page. In this case, it is the listings page, which we currently have no listings. But we do have properties that we preloaded. So let's go down to my properties. You can see all of the different properties. We're apparently very well to do. Um, and we're going to first delete a property that we recently sold. And then we're going to add a property. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we hard coded in three image URLs because the data that we got from the Airbnb API was all image URLs. So we don't have the image upload feature at this time. And you can see our new property, the Royal Suite has just populated into our properties tab. We're going to add a listing. Choose the date and time when our property will need to be cleaned and we can leave a note for our cleaners if we have anything specific to tell them. After we create a listing, we will be taken to the listings tab where we can see our listing. For the purpose of our demonstration, we're going to add a second listing. Now, at this point, I'm going to log out as the host and go on about my day, and Phil's going to walk you through becoming a new worker. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do as a worker is you're going to want to sign up. So on the right side, sign up, and then obviously as a worker, fill in your information, which is your full name, and your email, phone number, and your password. Be self-explanatory. And uh, once you have that all, just uh, click the sign up button. And that'll create your information. So now you can go ahead and sign in. So put in your sign in information. And then once you are signed in, you will see that there are two available jobs that are posted on my page. Um, as the worker, I'm going to want to go ahead and accept those two jobs. So once I have them accepted, they all pop up on my schedule. And from here, I have the option to cancel it. Let's say I booked it and I, I'm busy that day. I forgot. I can go ahead. I can cancel it. So I'll just click the cancel button. And it should pop up back on the available jobs right there. And uh, for the purpose of the demonstration, I'll go ahead and accept that again. And um, yeah, from there, I'll just log out and you'll see more on the uh, host side. Chris, you're muted. Now as the host, I've logged back in to check if my jobs have been accepted. And uh, I see now that I have a payment notification bell up at the top. I can navigate to my payments from there or the menu on the left. And what we will do in the future is we will integrate a default payment method and this would basically be like a pay now or a buy now button so when we click this button it will just pay it marks paid in our database and we can pay the second one now our payment notifications go away and I've got an important meeting so I'm gonna leave and log out and hopefully my job will get cleaned by my cleaner uh. So if you want to see the worker side, you log back in as the worker and uh, you go into my schedule. And once you complete the job, you hit complete with the jobs. And if you go on my work history, it'll, it should show up there, right there. And uh, yeah, you'll see uh, your history and yeah, you, it's not reviewed yet or you don't have a ranking yet. So the, you'll log out you know, on the host side. So the final steps of the workflow here would be that as the host, I log back in. I see that the jobs have been completed. I go down to my history and I'm prompted to leave a rating 
In this case, we'll leave a rating of five. And I'm gonna leave a rating of three on this one. And then I can also log out. And Phil can log in now as the worker. Yeah. And uh, I should be able to see my ratings. So if you go on um, my work history, I will show each individual job the ratings I got five three. And if you click on my profile, it'll show the average. So yeah, the, it's four stars, the average out of the, the rating. So that's how that works. And that's all of the back and forth that we put you all through to see each side of this journey. Um, we can go back to the slides, Wendy, if you'd like. And talk about some of the challenges that you faced, Wendy. Oh, hold on a second. Let me put it back on the slide. There you go. Yes, um, one of the... Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. One of the biggest challenges we have encountered on this project was the back end um, to think through the flow of our app and then start with the database. And we realized we had to change our model a couple of times along the way. And the second challenge I had was writing queries in SQL Alchemy. It's basically like learning a new language. Even if you know the query in SQL, um, you have to learn every part of it in SQL Alchemy and then convert the data back when you get it. For me, that was the, that was the biggest challenge. And um, one of the biggest challenges that I faced was uh, as, as a um, focusing on the landing page. When you log in, you're, the user is redirected to the landing page and all of our components throughout our, all of our menus load at once. They're conditionally rendered. Um, but they all update the state individually and getting those um, state updates to reflect across all of the different components was very challenging. So um, as Wendy just mentioned, we did a lot of uh, tailoring for the responses from the back end to make sure that we got back the data that we needed. And then we used a bunch of uh, helper functions to uh, create, uh, reset the global state when we did the on-click events. And then this was a similar challenge that we had with the star rating system. Uh, we created different uh, use effect and hooks to allow the stars to reflect the rating and push that data back to the hosts and the workers instantaneously. And then some future implementations that we would like to do uh, include the worker's ability to alert hosts to review their completed jobs, um, an image upload for workers to alert hosts if there were damages left by the previous guest, a timer countdown, which would alert the host when their listing is almost expired with the option to pay a priority boost to incentivize workers because they can't allow their property to go unclean before their next guests arrive and also an alert for the workers to let them know when an upcoming listing might meet their filter criteria and they'll give them the option to accept before it actually comes onto the market. And that was spotless. Are there any questions or comments? Nice work guys. It was nice how you walked through like all the features and how you can see it from the worker side or from the uh, lister, I guess, the renter owner side. Um, yeah. So it was cool how everything, like when you added one, it would show up on the other. Very seamless and uh, very nice UI UX design. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments for this one? All right. I guess we're not in the big questions mood today. Big Friday night. <laughs> All right. We're just terrified. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little nervous. Oh, Sarah has a question. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, who chose the pink? <laughs> the pink, the pink, um, it actually stemmed from the original login form. Uh, Wendy is very good at finding cool 
um, I, I what would you call it when they like it was template like a template. Yeah, it was like a cool template, and then we we actually designed the whole rest of the site with just like gray, and um, we did all the functionality and stuff. And then over time, we just slowly started incorporating that pink from the login into everything, and it just kind of became became the site and then when i was we, doing the uh the slides for the presentation there was a pink that matched almost perfectly so i just pulled that pink in and took that and we ran with that but yeah well it looks really really good i was just wondering i was like there's no girls but a lot of guys are like <laughs> uh, I, color so i will also give credit to my uh five-year-old daughter who saw me working and said she liked the pink you so know that, that's a lot that, <laughs> that may have been the big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, great job, guys. Thank you. I did have a question. How did you guys come up with Spotless? Uh, we just, honestly, it was the first name that, that we threw out. And we kind of just threw it out and then moved on without actually naming it. And then we, that Well, I mean, the up. concept. How did you guys come up with a concept of ah, well phil can actually speak to that because it originally wasn't going to be a cleaning app yeah uh i just like years ago um because i'm like a server and i thought of an app where i thought it would be cool where it's like you go in and instead of having like a schedule you kind of like uber you just like log in and whichever restaurant needs a server or a bartender you know they'll accept you and it's just the same rating systems and then um i gave that idea and then I think uh, Chris and Wendy, they were talking about um, just Airbnbs and how house cleaners really need that. Like Airbnb owners really need uh, someone to clean their house. And it kind of just made sense. And we just kind of merged these two ideas together. And that's how we kind of went about it. Yeah, it's, it's a, a really interesting thing. Um, we, we know someone down here in uh, Deerfield that owns a Airbnb. And um, we tried to hook her up with a, a cleaning service that we knew and uh, they wouldn't really take her because they just they'll be like we schedule you every friday and we come and clean your house on friday so we thought if it was like more of a gig worker economy we could potentially have have that that need filled and it, and it you nice. know it piggybacked off of phil's idea clever so thank you yeah very nice that you thought of something like a real problem and that your app solves a real problem all righty. Well, next up we have Rhythm Realm with Debbie, Brandon, and Leo. Hey, guys. Hi, Leo. Just waiting. Hello. There you go, Brandon. And then we're waiting on Debbie. She's going to be presenting the slides. She should okay. Be uh, are you going? Can you guys see me? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. Let me get this going. Um, sure. Can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. So, um, hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Davila, part of a three person team here in Boca Raton, Florida, part of the Four Geeks Academy. And um, we'd like to welcome you to our music app, Rhythm Realm. 
So our project is basically a music streaming service. Um, when we were brainstorming, uh, we came up with the idea. So uh, TikTok has replaced the radio and the radio doesn't decide hits, TikTok does. The glaring question is why didn't Spotify or Apple, Apple capitalize on the social aspect of music? So um, we came up with an answer for that, um, a social music streaming service, one where users can connect with nearby friends based on music preference and location. You can also see concerts and events that your friends are going to and buy tickets. And of course, it is still a music streaming service. So about our application, um, I'll tell you a little bit about our, our application so you don't have to read all this stuff. We wanted to merge a social media app and something like Apple Music. So um, with our Spotify API, we made it possible for you to play any album or song that you'd like or find any artist, just about any artist. Also, our platform is dedicated to embracing all forms of music genres. So every genre from jazz to heavy metal is available. And um, a second awesome part of our app is our playlist creation feature, where you can make your own personalized playlist and share with your friends or new connections that you can make online. And a third uh, very interesting feature is also that you can connect with the like-minded music lovers um, by um, comparing playlists or music genres that you like and going to concerts or maybe planning a group uh, trip to a concert, staying informed about local events and shows. Um, so I'd like to introduce the rest of the team. Um, as you know, my name is Debbie Davila. My map background is in music and the arts. Um, I was a ballet dancer for many years. Um, then I became a commercial lifestyle photographer. Um, I did a lot of marketing and branding for luxury brands. Um, I actually photographed a lot of very famous bands and musicians. And um, I've always liked to work behind the scenes and the technical end. So um, I've always kind of like dabbled in coding and I just decided to be a legit coder or software engineer. <laughs> so anyway, my uh, next um, person here is oh, Brandon. Sure. Brandon. So like my name is Brandon. Uh, I'm 21 years old. I was born and raised in Boca, Richardson, Florida for all my life. Never moved anywhere. <laughs> um, but I have tried a bunch of different avenues for what I wanted to do career wise, um, but nothing really stuck other than tech. Uh, I've always been a big tech geek. So uh, it just seemed fitting that I went down the tech route. Hello, and my name is Leo. Um, I'm 23 years old, and I was born in the Dominican Republic. I moved over to the States when I was like eight years old. Um, I joined 4Geeks because uh, I'm sure like a lot of us, like we've tried a lot to like learn how to code. And for some reason, like we did, like I just couldn't. So um, thanks to like joining this program and like thanks, and I've like realized this like after finishing the project that like I've definitely like my objective has been like accomplished um, in learning how to code here, which I'm really grateful for. But that's a little bit more about me. So I am going to go through some of our um, one of our very cool features of our app is that. Um, and that really sets us apart is that it's a social music streaming service. So not social media, but more of a social music streaming service. Um, and so when you log in the first page, you're going to find that you can instantly see concerts in your area that um, line up with your music preferences and the things that you like that you've been searching. Um, and um, also other users that you can connect with that have like similar interests. And um, <clears throat> you can instantly see uh, events, concerts, like I said, and other users that you can connect with. So you can actually make friends with other people. 
So um, within our web app, we, we, we get all of our music data from the Spotify API, um, and it allows you to listen to or search through any artist, album, song, um, and it's, it's pretty extensive to what you can do with it. Um, and finally, as Debbie said, another feature we added um, was to be able to have every user like add their own playlist and also be able to search other users um, and be able to look at the playlist that they have made. So that's also another real uh, cool feature that we're proud to have on our application. Um, now, to talk a little bit more about the technical details, um, I'm not going to speak in like too much about uh, like we did obviously use React, and um, one of the main tools that we used was the Fetch, the Fetch API to pretty much handle all our requests on the front end. Um, for the Spotify API, as Brandon said, it was like really, really extensive. We ended up using about like 20 endpoints in total just from the Spotify API alone. Um, from the SeatGeek API to pull events in, um, we were able, I think we used like three or four endpoints from them. Um, and the way that our player works, everything's like broadcasted through Spotify. So every time there's a play, there's a pause, there's anything that's like a request getting sent. Um, and everything, if you were to log into like the Spotify account, you'll be able to see that the web application is actually using the player. Um, so, and then for the back end, we went ahead. Um, let me see. Um, and then for the back end, we went ahead and we used uh, Python and uh, Flask. Um, and then for our own database, we actually were proud. We ended up having like 23 endpoints, um, which pretty much handled everything from like user login to tracking users, favorite genres, their top songs, and all of those things. Okay, and then from here, Brandon's actually going to be in control of the demo. Um, someone said that my mic was popping. Does it sound a little bit better or is it still popping? A uh, little bit. It is, okay. but it's not bothersome. It's it's okay. Okay. If it's not bothersome, then I'll continue. So um, we'll go ahead and then, uh, yeah, Brandon will go here and uh, show the, uh, the demo of our application. Um, so the first thing we have here is our landing page. And for the purpose of this application, um, we've decided to mock users. Um, we've decided that like showing, creating accounts isn't really like the pivotal part of our application. Um, so we've already gone in and we've mocked some users. So Brandon, you can just go ahead and sign in. Um, and then from here, we use JWT authentication in order to authenticate the user um, and send a token. And as I said, everything does run through the Spotify API. So we're just going to have to go ahead and just connect um, over to it. So then that way we can make sure that we're all synced up. Um, and that would similarly, um, more conversely, when you're logging in, that's more of like you would go into your account and log in with Spotify. Um, and then here we're actually greeted with the home page of our application, or as we like to call it, the discover page. Um, in the discover page, uh, you'll actually see four sections. Um, the first section that you're going to see is uh, based on your previous listens. And the thing that I would say we're really proud about this application is that every time you play a song, every time you do anything, we're constantly taking the artist, the genre, and the song itself and optimizing your feed to give you what you want to listen based on the recommended. Um, and then we were able to give that data that we were kind of able to harvest and send it back to the Spotify API to be able to give us like this data that we see here. Um, and then underneath here, you'll be able to see, as Debbie said, the events that are in your area. Um, and we're still, um, for the future, we're working on making them relevant to the user. Um, right now, they're just based on the geolocation of the user that's logged in currently, and that's how these are getting shown. Um, Underneath here, and as we were saying, the uh, social aspect of it is extremely important. Um, so here we actually show users based on your music preference and location. Um, so depending on what that user listens, you'll be able to kind of see in location and kind of send a friend request and interact with kind of what they've been doing. And again, the whole point of this application is the community aspect of music and how music connects people. And then on the bottom here, um, you're gonna be able to see 
um, like upcoming events that you have um, or that you've added to your account in order to attend. Um, so that is pretty much going to wrap it up for like the discover page. Um, the other thing that we did uh, was we wanted to implement the search feature, um, which is what uh, Brandon was uh, talking about during the presentation, which is like we wanted a way to give someone a music app as well. It's like, hey, like if you use TikTok, it's just TikTok and like a 30 second. It's like, what if like this can actually just be the app that you do everything on? So over here, you can actually search for artists. So we'll search up Taylor Swift um, because she's very important. And then we'll go ahead here and we hit that. Um, and right away, you can kind of see her top songs. Um, and this is all given to us and made possible by the help of the Spotify API. Um, and then if we keep going down on here, the cool thing is it's that everything is like very real. And like she just released this album like today and our API already like has or our web app already has the data. Um, and you can select that album if you want. And it would directly link you over um, to her like album with the duration and anything that you need. Um, and if you wanted to play any song on this album, if you wanted to play the album, you could play the red button underneath Taylor Swift. And that would pretty much put the whole album in, in here. Um, boom. So then that would pretty much cue like the whole album. We also have like volume control, playback control. Um, and obviously you can see the name of the song playing. You can hit any of those play buttons at any time to select whatever song you want to play. Um, and then we can go back out to the um, artist page one more time just to show the last feature of that artist page. And the last feature of the artist page is actually going to be the events that that you, um, person has nearby alongside with um, relevant information of that ticket. And this is where we really use a SeatGeek API. So here you can see that Taylor Swift has like three events upcoming here in Miami Gardens. Um, and there's some relevant information. Um, and while we're at it, so you guys can like, um, one of the things that we really wanted to get to and we didn't get to, we would like to like purchase the tickets and actually have the ability to do everything in our app. Right now, this is only linking you to the event and SeatGeek and going there. However, we do have the feature that you can add this event to your account um, as a way of tracking and making sure that you know that you're going. So as Brandon did, he added that there. And then with the search feature, there's a few more things that you can search through. Um, you can search by individual song. You can search by the album. And then most importantly, um, you can search other uh, music lovers like in the database as well. Um, and again, if like, let's say Brandon were to go to like, a uh, um, before we do that, Brandon, let's go to like the songs real quick. Um, and if you were to go like to any song, we um, have everything like linked up where like if you hit uh, this and you wanted to go to any to the album, you could actually go ahead and hit that. But before you go to the album, if you can just go back one more time, you'll actually see a little hamburger um, there that says playlist. And that is our way that we've kind of been inspired by the GitHub like um, branch menu to be able to use this feature. And what we've done is if it's red, that means that the song isn't in the playlist, but we're going to go ahead and create a new playlist and add this song to this playlist. Um, so we can add this song here and then uh, whenever we're ready to create it, we can hit the button. Cool. And then you'll be able to see that it's grayed out if the song is already in the playlist. And if we want to add the song to any other playlist, we can go ahead and just hit test playlist and that would be added to the song. And as I just said before, if you wanted to navigate to the rest of the album, you can go in here and add the rest of the songs from here. Um, let's go back out to the search feature um, and go over to the music lovers. And these are some of the, uh, we are filtering through our like uh, database and kind of showing all the people that we have so far. Um, and here we have someone, Albert, you can go ahead and click on Albert. Um, and you'll see that we're also, what makes it so powerful is that we're tracking everyone's data. So like for, um, and no, we're not selling it by the way, like in the most holistic way, we are um, <laughs> grabbing the data to give back the best result to the user. Um, and in that way, the top tracks here, um, anytime the song gets played and you can play it directly from the top tracks, then we have the events tab in this user page where you are actually allowed to see um, this groups it into different uh, buckets. So you could be grouped into the visited events or the upcoming. So then that way you can go into Albert's account anytime and be like, oh, he went to like eight Taylor Swift concerts last year. I'd probably get along with that guy. 
So that's more or less uh, what that feature and the spirit of that feature is. Unfortunately, since we've started building our API, no events have come in the past. So when we've started adding events, we really can't show the visited ones. Um, but once they start passing, it is set up to automatically do that. Um, after that, we have the favorite artists, which we're obviously tracking. And you can hit any of these, and it's going to take you over to the artist page if you want to find out more about it. And that's going to take you back to that artist page and show you everything there. And finally, you have the user playlists, which are playlists that they would have added. And then let's go back out to the discover, uh, or actually, pardon me, the profile page, which is our own page and how we can control our things. And here you'll see that there's two additional tabs. Of course, um, you're going to be able to see the top uh, tracks, the events. Um, and here, if you go to the events, you'll actually see the Taylor Swift ones that we added a little bit earlier over here. Um, and the one thing that we um, also have is your friend list and your friend request. So pretty much you don't want everyone to like be seeing your data. So you can accept or decline and people can send requests as they wish and they go. Um, and while we're at the application, the main thing we want to keep working on and developing on it is working out the social features and making the app comparable to like a really good social app that makes people want to stay there both for the music and for um, the social aspect itself. Um, and that's all for our demo today. And then finally, I think, Debbie, if you can just show the presentation one more time, um, we are just have to go over the challenges. Right. If we don't get it, if we don't get it, then it wasn't a crazy slide. It was just a slide. Okay. Maybe we could just say what our yeah, challenges were. Yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah, I, I don't know if I can get back that page. Yeah. So the main. Um, so I'll go, go ahead. Yeah, I'll go first. So like the main challenge, and I'll kind of like speak for the group on this overall, and then um, everyone can kind of say that. Um, but unfortunately, like we were uh, in person, completely in person, uh, a cohort, and I ended up getting sick and getting the rest of the sick. Um, and we were kind of like pretty like we kind of like our timeline was kind of cut down by half because we just like really were ill and couldn't connect. And then we also had to like communicate through Slack and online, which was just it's not that it was hard. It was just a change because we pretty much spent the whole cohort going through like in person, communicating in person and then just having to switch it all to online and in person during the project when collaboration was the most important, made it extremely hard, but I'm glad that we persevered. And I think at the end of the day, we're um, pretty happy with the product um, that we turned in. Yeah, I would say the same um, challenge was uh, being sick, COVID, I had like really bad fever and uh, hard to be creative and come up with like a concept and like the layout and the, you know, all that, the colors and all this for the, um, for our project and I, I was getting nervous because it was like five days and I felt like I was going to die. And then, uh, but we made it. It's not so bad, right? So. Um, I'd say one of my biggest challenges uh, was just, it was really just the Spotify API. I mean, it was extensive is one way to put it. It comes back with so much results and it's so hard to filter through everything. Uh, and uh, the API itself with the endpoints, it's pretty, annoying to say the least, honestly. Um, and then along with relationships in the back end, we're also something to get used to, uh, with the whole social aspect was a pretty difficult thing to, to get going. So, yeah, you're muted, Leah. Other than that, that'll wrap up our presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please, um, we'll be more than happy to answer them. Nice work, guys. You guys got a lot of comments in the chat about your styling and functionalities. So, yeah, it was really cool. You had a lot of features. Love the Taylor Swift example. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. I was wondering um, if you click play, does it play the music? Uh, yes, it does. Um, there is actually, uh, yes, that was like one of the hardest things to get working. And then I realized that like the music's not going to play through the presentation, um, oh. but it does. It does, or it should. I'm not sure why it didn't. But yes, the music does play through, um, which was pretty challenging. But again, that's all like interacting with like the API on Spotify. It wasn't like the same way that we did the project. 
practice. It was we had to just pretty much send a request anytime we wanted to play or pop those things. Okay, awesome. That's a pretty cool project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Well, perfect timing because Sarah, you are up next. <laughs> You already have your camera on, so you can just stay here. <laughs> um, oh, geez. Okay, let me make sure it's running real quick because I need to restart my code space. Um, and it takes the longest right now, of course. While that loads for the previous group, what was the inspiration? Like who, how did you guys, what was the brainchild? Um, for inspiration, I can't, I'm not too sure. Um, I think one day when we were coming up for ideas, uh, I just had a, I had an idea about a social media sort of thing and then music got brought up between us and I think deciding to integrate it was pretty much how we decided to go about it. Um, as far as I can remember, at least. Innovative. I need to think like you. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty great. All right. I'm very nervous, so <laughs> um, let me see. All right. Oh, wait, I need to start the. Hold on, hold on. Oh, jeez. What do I do? How do I make it smaller, guys? Um, we're seeing your right. presentation just like normal. You're good. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so I created a coloring web application called Color Me. Um, this is the table of contacts. Um, so meet the team. This is our front end developer, our back end developer, and our UI UX designer, um, which is me, because I did this project on my own. Um, a little bit about me, I am 21 years old. I'm a nail tech, and I was looking for a career change. Um, and I wanted to go to a coding boot camp because um, coders and developers make money. Uh, <laughs> so I started not knowing anything about coding and now I can develop fun and interactive applications that I personally enjoy and hopefully others enjoy as well. A little bit about um, my project. Um, the project offers various functions and features aimed to enhance the coloring experience. Users can easily sign up or log in to access the platform's full functionality and content. Users can select coloring sheets from a diverse range of designs and, started, um, and start coloring them using the platform's tools. Um, users, users have the option to save their completed coloring pages to their profile for later access and continued um, enjoyment. The platform includes a streak feature that tracks users' coloring activities, um, provides motivation and fostering a sense of community and engagement. Some tools I use, I use CSS, React, Bootstrap, HTML, and Python. And the reason why I chose this project is because I love to color with my six-year-old niece. We love to color, paint, draw, do some fun activities. And um, as I was looking for some research on um, how much paper is being wasted when people, when um, like coloring books are sold in stores. And from my understanding, the revival of traditional coloring books is enjoyable for many 
but it is critical to recognize the environmental impact. Paper usage leads to deforestation and habitat loss, while ink chemicals pollute the air and water. Energy consumption and waste generation um, further compound these issues, underscoring the importance of seeking eco-friendly alternatives. And now I can show you guys my website, and I'm very proud of it. Don't look at my code. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so this is the front page. Um, you could choose to sign up here. I already have an account, so I will be going ahead and logging in. And over here, you can um, see that I have a bunch of different pictures you can choose from. Um, you could also favorite them to see them later if you want to color it at a later time. If you go to your portfolio, um, your images will go ahead and load right here, your favorites. Um, and over here, it will actually show you once you have already colored, I need to complete this. Um, it shows you your name, your date of birth, and your coloring streak. And you go to Let's Color, you choose one of these pages. This one's my favorite because it looks like ice cream and fries. Um, and then you have the option to choose any color you want. And color let's say you accidentally go off the lines and you want to undo just that specific part you can go ahead and click the undo button and you can actually just undo until it's all done um, but hold on. you can also once you color it a little bit you make it look pretty. I'm just trying to show you guys a demo, so I'm not <laughs> doing it so perfectly. Um, but you can save the image as well and download it, and it'll save to your computer um, the colored page, and then you could also upload it to your page later on in your portfolio right here. Um, and then... I believe that is it. This is my website. Um, go back to my PowerPoint. Right. I look at a slideshow. Okay. All right. Some challenges I ran into. Um, were learning new tools such as the canvas tag. Um, I feel like I didn't learn this in the cohort. So for me, it was kind of like, whoa, I didn't know this even existed. And I had to do a lot of research to understand how the um, canvas was going to work um, to, so that I could color on my pages. I tried multiple different codes um, and it was really hard until we got it right. Um, another challenge I personally faced throughout this, um, throughout creating this project was I had um, Ramadan and it was a month where we fast. So I feel like that made it a little bit harder to fast and do something that's so big. Um, my header and footer would move every single time I changed anything on my code. So they did not like me during my, um, experience in this um, project. Another thing that was really challenging for me is the coloring pencil. Um, it was coloring off the page so the um, mouse could be in the left in the bottom left corner but be coloring at the top and it was kind of really frustrating figuring that aspect out, but we made it. Um, An imposter syndrome, I heard a lot of people say that, and I definitely experienced that. I This was not my original project. My original project was going to be a Pinterest website and um, or application, and um, then I was like, oh, maybe I should do an e-commerce, and so I changed my mind very 
too many times um, until I decided to do this coloring um, website, which honestly, I really, really love just because it is personal to me. And I'm sure my niece will love to use it later on. Some things I would like to add in the future, um, I would like to add a chat robot um, so that people can ask questions or get feedback. Um, I would like people to share on their social media so that others can see and um, can also use the app. It is free, so anybody can um, go ahead and sign in and color. Um, and I would love to create my own images um, that I design later on as well. I did create some of them, but I would like to make it more personal and design them myself. Um, and I also thought about printing like at the end of the year or whenever somebody is ready to um, print out all the colored images that they have colored, um, they can print it into a little book and they could have it forever instead of something that they, you know, have a bunch of coloring pages in that they don't color or they end up throwing out. Um, and then thank you guys. Um, and thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Valerie and Teresa and Jean. Everybody was so helpful. And Gratitude is extended to every member in cohort Miami 60. You guys have been so supportive and I appreciate all of you for all your help and you guys have been just amazing. I'm so glad that I was a part of this cohort specifically, especially because we had a little bit too much fun. <laughs> but that concludes my presentation. Very nice job, Sarah. I was telling her earlier, I've never seen a project that's so simple, but so good at the same time. It's like, I was like, I also was freaking out. I was muted the whole time. So no worries. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was thank you. very, very nice. Um, you, very guys. proud of you, Sarah. You struggled in the beginning, but I'm very proud of you for sticking it through and not giving up. And look at the result. Yes! Yes! Wow. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. You guys are literally the best. <laughs> Would not have done it without you guys. Yeah, and you completed it all on your own, which is a huge feat. So big congrats thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Chris, <laughs> about Taylor. <laughs> Jesus, I just adventure. want to see everyone succeed. We all worked so hard. <laughs> we did. I'm sorry. I had to take a second because I was crying with you, Sarah, because I remember <laughs> like one of our first projects, like, oh my gosh. Um, oh. I remember you were struggling so hard and now you pull this up. It's like, wow, I'm very emotional. Oh my we all <laughs> struggled. I think, I think too, like it's, it's crazy to be able to just open a code space and code now because I remember like the first we started, we're like, we don't know what we're doing. And this is so scary. <laughs> and thankfully Dylan and Zach, and I know we had Michelle in the beginning as well, but Dylan, I will give it up to him. He did make all of us feel comfortable and help us through a lot. So thank you, Dylan, to that as well. Thank you so much. That means a ton and really proud of you guys. This you did awesome. so good for your first class as well. So we're proud of you. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys were my first class. Great people. Yay! <laughs> we made it. We made the cut, everybody. <laughs> All right. We just have one more project also from Miami PT60. So Dylan, awesome Dylan's here to see you guys. And we have Nourish Nav with Kezia and Jasmine. Please, I'm not ready to keep on crying. <laughs> Y'all need to stop because I've been no, super we're emotional up. all day. No, we're <laughs> we're up. Through this, okay? I'm nervous enough as is. Okay. Hi, guys. Hello. All right, you know, let's present. Hold on. Jasmine's going to share her screen and I'm going to tell a joke. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Okay, so we are Team Nourish Nav, and I'm Kezia. Um, so I, like Leo, it was so nice to hear his background. I came to this country at eight years old from Trinidad, and um, I, the, my entire like career was mainly in sales. So I've done like 
door to door sales, like back when, you know, you would go into a business and stuff like that. And how um, our app is about nutrition and how I stumbled upon that is like, I went into a gym to sell to them. And the owner was like, hey, you want to work here? <laughs> it was totally like random, you know, but that's how I got into nutrition and fitness. Um, so that's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and making this transition into coding has been one of the best and scariest experiences ever. And what I love about coding most and foremost is how it keeps you accountable. So you know how you'll say, well, I did that. Would I put that in there? No, the code will not lie for you. So <laughs> I've enjoyed that, you know, um, learning more about that. And I'm going to pass it over to Jasmine. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Ine, um, and I am a professor. But aside from that, I'm just overall passionate about health and wellness. Um, and it's just something that I've always been interested in since a child. I've done all sports throughout elementary, middle, high school, and even now as an adult, I think I'm like a grown-up athlete, even though I don't have a team, but I still like exercising and health and wellness. Um, what brought me to Four Geeks was just this need to create and make things better. Um, as a professor, even as a middle school teacher, we will use platforms and I will always see like, hmm, that's good, but like, this could have been better. Like, why didn't they do this? And the same thing with... Um, my nutrition, like when I would track things and I would want to know about like what I'm consuming or what is this and I'm using different applications to help me do it. I would love a lot of the features, but then maybe some I wouldn't love as much. And I'm like, well, why didn't they do this? And then that made me want to learn how to get into like developing applications so I can make the things that I use all the time um, better. And here is Nourish Nav, our lovely logo. I love her. She is so cute. <laughs> um, so Nourish Nav is, um, so a few things. So Nourish Nav is just a name that I've been thinking about for a very long time. I really like the name. It means a lot to me because it basically symbolized navigating the nourishment of your body. When you use a lot of applications, like, for example, LifeSum, the name in itself is, it tells you what it is, sum, like a total. And Nourish Nav isn't really about that. It's about the longevity of your body and just what you're what you're consuming to make yourself feel good. It's not about being an Instagram baddie. It's about, um, <laughs> it's more about like your longevity. How are you going to feel when you're 40, when you're 50? Like, how are you, how are you, like, what is your mobi mobility going to be like? All of those things. So the focus of Nourish Nav is, um, health, wellness, but from the perspective of just taking care of your body. And I'll pass it to Kezia. Yeah, so when it comes when it came to uh, our site, we were really intentional about everything, all the details, even the colors, right? We wanted to create the ambiance uh, and ambiance to make um, our users feel a specific way. So like when you log in and you see all the green, um, usually when you think of green, you think of life, you think of growth, you think of revitalization, um, you think of new beginnings. And so we wanted to create that um, type of feeling within our user that they're starting on a journey to really nourish and um, 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 heal themselves. And even with the movement of the logo, like the, the fact that it's coming in, it, it, it's kind of to, um, um, have the person feel like what they're trying to accomplish is coming into fruition. How many women have you heard ha have tried to diets and try to change how they eat and stuff like that and never been able to like really stick to it. And so we want every part of this application to be a reminder, like you're doing it, you're on the right path and you're, you're moving forward towards what you are trying to. And here are a few features of um, Nourish Nav. So like why Nourish Nav is a question. So um, this app has a lot of features. So there is like an area where you can click the recipe and um, and it'll pop up so that you can have some nutritious, nutritious options. Um, and then there's a daily tracker where you can add in your meals for each day. So you'll have breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, and you can add in your meal and go ahead and plan for the week ahead. A week ahead if you're... Um, you know, wanting to just know what you're eating and you're into meal prepping or even just the night before for the following day. 
And then the macro tracker here lets you put in what you're eating and it immediately populates your meal. And for people who may not know, the macro is your their major nutrients. So your carbs, your proteins, and your fats, which are all very, very important. So when you type that in, for example, you type in pear, it'll tell you exactly how many um, carbs is in that pear, um, how many, um, um, how much protein and how much fat. Um, and the reason why this app is important is because, um, I, I mean, I've used similar similar apps. I, like I, I use apps like this all the time, but what makes it different is the focus on nutrition within itself. It's the, it's the focus on how your body is feeling overall um, and just your overall wellness. It's a holistic app. Yeah. And so to piggyback off of what Jasmine is saying, like I said, I've been a personal trainer since 2019. I've been a nutritionist since 2021. And um, what I've found is that women, the women that I've worked with, their help has um, been struggling and lacking. And, and women that I don't even work with that I just talk to um, move um, on a day to day. Right. So studies show that women eat on average. 25 to 30 grams of protein a day, but they should really be eating 45 to 50 grams. So not getting enough protein in a day can lead to muscle loss, edema, which is the swelling of your body, hair loss, skin changes, decreased immunity, anemia, slow healing, and way more guys. Like I think it, when people, when you say macros, it it's become like a buzzword, right? It, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to count my macros. But macronutrients, the nutrient part is the most um, important. So making sure that you have a fat, a protein, and a carb for each meal is what's going to, that's what your body is looking for every three to four hours. And so just the user logging in and understanding how important it is to include um, those macronutrient for each meal is like basically what the app is about, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, one thing that we want to showcase folks, right? If they go and try to say, I'm inputting an apple. I just had an apple for a snack. Well, no, not just that apple. Cause it, has anyone ever had an apple and then gotten hungry like five minutes later? Well, you just had a carb by itself. The reason why you get hungry so quick is because you didn't pair it with a protein and a fat and that slows down um, your blood sugar level spiking. I'm not going to get too much into mm -hmm. that, but it, this app is really about teaching people how to get back to basics, understanding how food impacts our body body and how to utilize it to give you energy, to improve your health, and to just have an overall um, wellness feel. And some of um, the technologies we use to develop this, um, this website, this application is um, Bootstrap, uh, React, and HTML, CSS. Yep. And then also we use SQL. I swear I'm going to mess up this word. SQL alchemy for mm -hmm. the back end, you know, which basically you guys know, gave us the toolkit needed for working and interacting with the databases. Um, and then, you know, we used it to um, define our database uh, models, query data and uh, all of that nature and then we also use SendGrid for the um forget password we use rapid api for the mac macro calculator and we use um calorie ninjas for the macro tracker so we use a couple of different apis and let's get into our demo hopefully it did not stop working while i was in here let's Let's just make sure. Exactly. Right. Um, right, right. Let me just see here if it's going to be like, oh, okay, we're still working. Okay. And this is Nourish Nav. So when you click on the website, this is the home page. And you can come on over here to sign up. I already have a um, username, but I'm going to go ahead and make another one. And we're going to call it for geeks. Um, Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in. 
And when we log in, we can see here our profile. This is where a user will come so that they're able to put in everything that they want to use to help them on their um, nutrition journey. So the first thing that we're gonna probably be looking at if we're a user um, here is the macro calculator. So they can go ahead and they can put in their age, they can put in their gender, their height, their weight, um, and their activity level, and then they can set their goals. So is it to maintain weight, um, lose weight, extreme weight loss? So we'll just put maintain weight for now. And then they have several diets that they can choose from. They'll choose balanced diet, and then they'll calculate it. And then it is here that they'll have the information that they need that will guide them through their daily um they're, when they're tracking their daily meals. So they should be eating, um, this is a recommend, recommendation of calories that they should consume. They also have the protein, the fat, and the carbs, those macros that we discussed that are very important. They'll fill out the rest of their information and then they can save it. Once they save it, they'll come here to the nutrition um, part of the website, which is where you can track your macros here. You can see the tracking of the macros here and it'll populate with the total calories as well as the proteins, the fat and the carbs. And then you can click here and um, select what day you want to plan for. So for example, a user can go ahead and type in um, a pair. And then when they type in pair, they'll see all of the nutrients here, the macros, and then also important things like cholesterol, um, saturated fat, sodium, and then they'll go ahead and add it to the milk and it'll update with the total calories and it'll also update up here so that they can see how close they're getting to their recommended calorie goal for the day as well as how close they're getting to their protein and their fats and carbs and if you see they put that pair in that's obviously not enough so they'll still need to add something to um, contribute to the protein category and the fat category category in addition to that they're able to track their water so if they just click here it'll let them know how many ounces of water they have um, consumed that day now, if they are on that um, nutrient application or sorry, view and they don't know what they want to eat, they have the option of coming here to get some inspo. My favorite is oats. Oh, my God, I can mm, I can eat them every single day. Um, so they'll click the recipe. They'll have all the ingredients here and then also the instructions on how to make them. And then they have meals for each category. Um, they'll click it, open it up, and then they can also track this inside of the nutrient um, portion of the website. We also have the about us and it discusses, um, like it just gives the, the user a little bit of information about us, about this application and the focus on nutrition and empowerment and self-love. It also has a focus on, um, just loving all body types, because once again, I want to stress the importance, um, or stress the fact that this app is not about fitting into a particular beauty standard. It is about your longevity. It is about your mobility. When you are 60 or whatever, and you are a grandma and you have your kids, your grandkids, you want to be able to run around with them. You want to be outside, blow on bubbles with them. You want to be energized. So that starts now. And it's about, it's all about how you eat. So to go back to our presentation, let me press present again. <laughs> Some challenges that we had. Yeah. So um, the back. Oh, what's going on? Um, getting it to work and do what we wanted to do. The back end was uh, pretty challenging overall. Um, just the authentication process, um, having the token not expire too soon, just figuring that out and how to extend that life so it doesn't um, just kick you out. Um, also, just that macro calculator, boy, um, it, you know, it spit back a lot of results and just understanding how to connect the endpoints and, and, and how to what syntax around writing, um, um, what syntax around collecting the results to then spit that back to the user. Um, that was really challenging. Um, but yeah, that was for me the most challenging part, the macro calculator, definitely. For me, the challenging part was um, making sure that the design was cohesive. So working with several um, different React components, just making sure that the font was the same, the color was the same, and that there was a cohesiveness. Um, I think a, a solution to that was like just creating like a font family color, I'm sorry, font family like text, font family color, and all those things to make sure that it was cohesive. Another challenge was um, 
using like like being very specific with the type of labels that you use and um in your css because you can put h2 and there's a lot of h2 <laughs> a lot of h2 elements and then one css like one style sheet could be affecting another style sheet so just making sure that i was very like um intentional with the naming i think just making sure that i was intentional when it came to planning and um that helped with just being a little bit more consistent with the design and just being a little bit more focused when i'm naming um the different elements i feel like that was um one of the, the key takeaways of this project just being more mindful mm -hmm. Next features. So we're very excited for the next features for um, this application. So one thing is having the user um, having the option to opt out a calorie view. One thing um, in my personal experience and using apps like this um, sometimes can be challenging. I know that there was a time where, um, especially right after having like my daughter, where like I, I used it, like it kind of was just like just like being very strict on it. And even if sometimes I would feel myself hungry, if like the calorie was maybe like I was too close to it, maybe I wouldn't want to eat. And I really do want to make sure that this application is um, creates a safe place for all people when they're using it, um, especially um, keeping in mind that uh, like eating disorders is um, something that people um, deal with. So given the option to opt out a calorie review and having a, a, a more clear focus on just the nutrients, we're thinking to add like a happy face, like if they hit like a total amount of cal um, macros in a day, like if they have all their protein, fats and things like that in the middle post to just having that number on there. Um, another thing that I believe um, would make this application a lot better is the barcode. So we plan on making this um, um, a mobile, um, a, a, we plan on making this usable on mobile devices. So being able to open up your phone and scan an item that you're eating to log into what you're eating for the day um, could also be very useful for users. And then also we would like to add in an area for daily exercise because that does affect how much more protein you have to eat. If you did a HIIT workout or you did sprints that day, then you probably need to consume um, more protein. If you're training for a marathon, then you probably have to carb up. So adding in that daily, daily exercise could be really useful for users. Uh, one thing I wanted to add to the feature that we did speak about too was adding that social um, media um, aspect to it, like having that accountability with friends and family and just really grabbing hold of the people next to you to make them um, have an option to be able to even you know, improve their nutrition. So being able to follow people, being able to like people um, reaching their macro goal for the day and being able to favorite certain recipes. That's another thing that we spoke about. Yes. So, yeah. And it'll add like a community um, feeling to the app. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to say thank you, man, Brittany and Val. <laughs> you guys were clutch, man. I, really? I Wow. <laughs> worked tirelessly with us and for me personally because like y'all know where I came from in the beginning <laughs> um with coding and stuff like that so Brittany and Valerie really taking the time to go through code with me and help me to understand what I'm doing why I'm doing it and how to then implement it on my own that was just um priceless priceless yeah. and then Dylan and Zach just being the most um, beautiful coaches ever, like the patience that you guys have just being there for us. Like I had a million, Sarah and I had the most questions in the beginning and, um, Dylan was so you can say that again. Patient. I mean, he was I, the patience that you have Dylan is unparalleled and I truly, Thank truly, you. truly appreciate it. I mean, it really helps. I remember one class we all sat there and was just like, are we about to cry together? No. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no, legit. Like, there's this in, my in my throat, and like Dylan's like, okay, guys. So, and then I'll like instantly calm down. So, yes, like he has the gentlest voice, Dylan. You did amazing, and yeah. I'm I'm just so grateful for you. You made mm -hmm. this really a, a great experience. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, guys. That really means a lot. I'm yes. so proud of you guys. You guys came from knowing absolutely nothing to making something like this, and um, I'm really excited to see where you guys go. Thank you so much. And yes, I just also have to say my personal thank you to Brittany because 
Yeah, girl, you really was like so helpful and just like I keep saying I need to buy you a coffee or something because the way that you helped me and like make me get unstuck when I was so stuck was just I really appreciate it. And you were just always there and being so supportive the entire time. So thank you. Thank you. I am just super proud of you guys, like being able to see you guys sit here right now, do your presentation and graduate. My heart is beyond happy. Congratulations. You guys really did a, a really, really good job. This app is awesome. Um, stoked you. for you guys. You guys got a bright future. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing job. I was waiting for everybody else to get out their congratulations first, but you guys really kind of left me speechless. Like when you were on the slide about like the app not being one size fits all and talking about your grant when you're a grandma and you want to play with your kids, like I was getting goosebumps, like <laughs> really thinking like, and the images that you have of like those oats and that acai bowl, like they just look so good. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it was just amazing. Thank you guys you. really hit it home. Thank you. So, big congratulations. Um, and a big congratulations to everybody tonight. We had an awesome lineup of projects. Every project was stellar. There was like no project that didn't hit like the top bar. It wasn't even like, you know, middle standard. Like everybody went above and beyond. We had a great roster of projects. Um, we always do these events on a Friday night because we want you guys to go out to enjoy hang out with your friends and family, celebrate over the weekend. If you guys are here in the Miami area, maybe meet up with each other, get to know each other in person. Um, next week, we start with the career support stuff, but we don't want you guys to think about that over the weekend. Take your weekend off, relax, um, and be in, uh, in tune for uh, what happens next week, which is career support. Um, is there anybody that wants to give a few like final last words before we sign off? Maybe Dylan, Brittany, I, I'm not sure. Even a student, go, go right Yeah, ahead. I can say something, of course. Um, I mean, I kind of already said it, but you guys came from being really uncertain in yourselves. And I think that's the biggest thing is that imposter syndrome and uh, not knowing if you can do it. And, you know, sometimes we just need that little bit of hand-holding, and that's okay. Uh, and I'm one piece in the process. You guys are the ones that actually put in the work, and you guys should be absolutely proud of yourself. And if you made it this far, no matter how challenging it is to land your first job in this field, uh, it's going to be nothing compared to the work you already put in. So I'm really proud for you guys to be my first class, and thank you for going through it with me. Wait, real, real quick. Guys, can you guys smile? I'm trying to take a screenshot. Hold on. Hold on. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. I can't wait for our Miami awesome. to meet up. Great job, everyone. Yes. Congrats. Congrats. <laughs> Fabulous job, guys. Have a good um, night, a good weekend. Enjoy, celebrate, and we will see you guys. Remember, you guys can breathe now. Breathe. 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 <laughs> what is breathing? <laughs> what is breathing in this? No, I'm so sad. I don't want to sign off. I'm so sad, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the tears.